Hey Replay viewers, be sure to check out my YouTube channel, Penguin6, where I make video blogs and other stuff. Right now, we're going to go on a subway ride back to the island, back past all of the guys trying to sell condominiums. Everybody there who has a scion is trying to sell you a condominium or sell mainland tourists a condo. So we got to get back down on the subway, make our way back to Hong Kong Island, and then we're going to go get our second lunch. Because why eat just one lunch when you can eat two? I'm just another guy. Of course I've had it in the ear before. I got a lust for life. Totoro does rock. Movie was awesome. Movie was awesome, but, and I confirm this, you have to have seen the original. You have to understand the original to have this one make any sense. Without the original, this one would be just meaningless. And it's a different movie than the original. I think there's a very clear message about nostalgia and living in the past. And this movie is pointing that out by not being the same movie as the first one. I just saw Train Spotting 2. T2, Train Spotting 2. Oh, wow. Uh, living in the past as I walk down here. I'm doing good. We're on our way back to Hong Kong Island to catch uh, some food, catch some lunch. Ooh, the new Power Ranger movie is coming out. Hey, Alper. Welcome to Hong Kong. We got, oh god, two minutes. Frick. Two minutes for the next train. Second lunch. Second lunch today is going to be fish and chips. Train spotting too. Yeah, it came out over Christmas basically. It just got out to Hong Kong. It was introduced in England uh, at the Christmas time. It's called T2, based loosely on the book Porno, which was the sequel to Train Spotting. I am going to Hooked. And I'm just another guy. Of course, I've had it in the ear before. If you like the first movie, you've got to see the second one. It's not the same movie, though. It speaks to a different time, you know? It's 20 years later. Jeez. Crowded. Sky is the music I like. I've seen all the Ghibli films. We actually have a Studio Ghibli store here in Hong Kong. seen the concert at the Budokan, Joe Hayashi at the Budokan? That's an amazing concert. So we're in the subway, guys. We're under the Victoria Harbor. We're under the South China Sea right now. Would you put, a, put an extremely strong U.S. military ally on the border with China? What possible benefit is there to China? The parents are going to lose weight when they get here. Yeah, you think so?
的终点站，谢谢乘搭港铁。Hong Kong, end of the Chongqing line. Thank you for traveling on the MTR. 
Is it some sort of heroin thing? I thought Iggy Pop was kind of clean. I don't know. All right. Yeah, many song lyrics I did not get. He did a lot of heroin with Lou Reed. Yeah, Lou Reed. Is he still alive or is he dead? Hey, Matthew, it's Andrew. All right, on my way up. I'm um, down in Central. So just at uh, the IFC coming up the escalator. So 15. Yep, but All right, food's been ordered. That time I didn't even have to say the usual. I just said it's me. <laughs> that was kind of cool. Yes, I am using the lapel mic. Does it sound bad? Good? Indifferent? So if you saw my Instagram, Penguin6, I just posted a picture from the uh, movie cinema ice rink, which was kind of cool. Just a modern guy. Is it warm? Yeah. Uh, it's warm now, but I just got out of the theater, and I was the only person in the theater, all right? So I had a private screening of the movie. There was nobody there, and it was cold. Yeah? Because, you know, theaters are usually cold, and then when there's not, like, 200 bodies in the theater, there's just one. It was, like, really, really cold. Train spotting two. T2. Train spotting two. So I just saw train spotting two. I really enjoyed it, but I liked the first one a lot. Um, I enjoyed this one a lot. And uh, so, yeah. So, guys, if you go to my Ghost in the Shell video on YouTube, that's the scene where um, Scarlett Johansson was looking for uh, a companionship, was filmed right there on that sidewalk. Well, that reminds me, I gotta. How do you do two lunches in one day? Well, when you walk 20,000 steps every day, which is about 10 miles, you can easily do two lunches a day. I walk 20,000 steps every day to stay trim. I just got a message from someone. Shit, where did I go? This is from? I'm doing all right. How are you doing? Hey, it's Claire Waddington, guys. Claire is a periscoper from France. And you guys can get in touch with her. Watch her scopes if you want to see what life is like in Paris. No, I can't remember. I just got a message from someone. But I can't remember what platform. Eh, hey, little Leo is watching. Cool. Hi, Leo. You're not keeping your mommy up late at night, I hope. How many miles is 20,000 steps? Uh, nine or ten miles, depending on how fast I walk and, the, and my stride. But it's about nine or ten miles a day. I do live here. I've lived here about seven years. Oh, good sleeper. That's, that's always nice. I bet, Claire, you're now wondering, hmm, maybe I should move to Hong Kong where I can hire a nanny for 500 euros a month. <laughs> We're in central Hong Kong, past the center now, making our way up. Do I have a Fitbit? Yes, I do have a Fitbit. Fitbit 1, I've had one for a couple years now. Actually, I really yeah, like it. Hey, Tony. So we had our first lunch at the noodle shop. My favorite noodle shop, Chimcha Key. Chimcha Key noodles is right down there. So that's where I had my first lunch before the movie. Now the movie's over, and we're on our way to our second lunch. They are pretty good noodles. Oh, it's you too.
Yeah, I love it. I'm a dad, I do dad stuff. <sighs> so, where is this? There we go, I reply. I don't know where the message What the hell did you to do Periscope? Well, I'm compelled to walk every day. I walk for, as I said, 10 miles. And trust me, walking 10 miles a day gets pretty freaking boring. So I whip out Periscope and take you guys with me so you guys can see where I live. Keep me company as I go for my hikes. Because I live in a pretty amazing place. place that some of you probably never will see. How long does it take to walk? Um, I'm doing about three hours. If I do about three hours, three to four hours of, of walking, I get my 20,000 steps, but I don't always do that in one go. So like I'm going to go up onto the peak. So I'll do a two hour loop at the peak. Then I'll do like 20 minutes here to run to the grocery store. And I mean, I'm already going to have... I'm going to have like two, I'll have like a third of my walking, which was already done, just running around. What's in here? Want to eat lunch? Why not drive? Why? Why drive? A, there's nowhere to park. B, there's 7.3 million people in Hong Kong, but only about 500,000 cars. Nobody drives. There's no need to drive. You know, that leads to something else. Just send me a note when you see someone who's overweight. If you see someone overweight here. And I'll play driving cars. <laughs> We're walking up to the mid levels. I haven't seen. I don't. Th I think I've seen maybe one or two really obese people in the last year, and both were foreigners visiting. Yeah, there's about 19 of these estimators, but I'm not going all the way up. I've only got one more to go. is visiting, right? Yeah, Claire, you're going to have to when you come to visit. I speak English. I'm very little Mandarin. And people here speak Cantonese. Claire can stop in when she comes to go home to New Zealand one day. Yeah, we got some Irish pubs. We got everything. We got French bistros, Irish pubs on the way to New Zealand, fish and chip shop, German restaurants. The language here is English. Everything is in English and in Chinese. So I speak the English part. Most people here on the island speak English. Oh, these elephant grounds. Are there homeless people begging for money? No, not really. There are a few. The government says there's about 800 homeless people. Uh, the private sector laughs and says, no, that number's more like 2,000. But that's in a city of 7.3 million. You know? So you don't have, like... You have a lot of people living in substandard housing, but they're not technically homeless. But begging, begging is not very common. It's extraordinarily expensive here. The average family in my son's international school spends 11,000 US dollars a month in rent. 11,000 US. I spent $14 for a gallon of milk. 14 US dollars for a gallon of milk. A box of Cheerios will run me nine US dollars. Gasoline is eight US dollars a gallon. Look at, look at it here. 
229 square feet, 229 square feet, that's about 3,000 US dollars. 244 square feet, and that's, uh, that's about oh, 1,500 US dollars a month. Yeah, 1,400 US dollars a month for 220 square feet. That's 20 by 10, folks. A 20 foot by 10 foot apartment will run you 1,500 US in this neighborhood. Average income of a Hong Konger without a college degree is about 2,000 US dollars a month. With a college degree, about 3,000. The average income of an international expat in the finance community is about 200,000 US, plus bonuses. 50% of the people live in public housing and healthcare is paid for by the government, so there's free healthcare. Paid for it by building. My job is being a dad, doing dad stuff, taking care of the kids. But I'm just a modern dad. Of course, I had it in the built process. Do, do, do. Boy! Oh, how's it going? Good, I just saw train spotting too. You good? Did you see the first one? Yeah, a long time ago. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you enjoyed the first one, understand. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah. It's kind of like closure on what happened in the first one, but it's totally it's different, a lot different than the first one. I mean, there's not a lot of heroin. <laughs> oh, I got a diet coke that's filled with ice. I love it. I love it. Let's see if Matthew's here. Sorry. Either. Mm. 200,000 a year, yeah. Anyway. Not too many trees. Actually, there's a. Actually, you'd be shocked how many trees are here. 75% of Hong Kong is jungle. Only 25% is uh, developed. So when I go out for my hike later, you won't see any people. You won't see anything but trees. Uh, most of Hong Kong is a jungle. It's very easy to get away from people. Jungles and beaches. We have lots of beaches. Hmm. The old airport's been converted into a cruise ship terminal, and they're adding a uh, football stadium or rugby stadium. So. They don't really, the, the land is so valuable, you don't have a lot of gardens down here. Because it's so easy, I mean, I'm, I'm literally five minutes away from a tropical rainforest. So, you know, I just, I can jump in a ta I can jump in that taxi and in five minutes, not even five minutes, I'll be in a jungle. A jungle, see you later Claire, with snakes and wild pigs and cockatoos. Same with the beach. I'm 15 minutes away from a beach on the Pacific. So it's a good mix. Not like the U.S. where everything is just sprawl, endless sprawl. Here there's a clear delineation, city, country. So, you know, yeah, there's not trees right here in this area, but five minutes from here, there's not any buildings. Uh, I'm a dad. I need to build a subway to get out first. Oh. Ah, that was so good. Well, it's been just here for 95 US. I think 95 for this. Red light flashing on the screen. Can you see it? No. My wife is a banker. How do I make money? I don't make money. I made money before. Is it paying to be with dad? It's uh, pretty spot on in the US as well. simply cannot be because Coke was about a buck US. I don't know how much you charge for Coke. Uh, actually, about two dollars US. Pretty pricey, but normally it's about a buck. But he keeps them in glass bottles and they're really cold. 
who's watching the kid? The nanny. Well, the kids are at school. Then the nanny will come. We have enough. I was a lawyer by trade. I don't practice law anymore. I started the dot com. I sold my internet company. My wife is a banker, so she works in banking and finance. So we do have four seasons. You get paid to be a dad. I get paid in, in, in uncountable ways when my kids come home and tell me their problems and hang with me and play with me. More valuable than any money. It is. I wouldn't trade it for anything. There's some good dim sum, but not right here. Here I'm at a fish and chip restaurant. It's very expensive. How do you survive very easily? Listen, if all you're trying to do is survive or just get enough money to eat, well then you'll easily do that. I mean, it's plenty easy to do that. But if you're trying to thrive and do other stuff, then you just got to do something else. Anything back? Yeah, I write apps every now and then. I've made a couple apps. I coach my son's soccer team. Money always comes. Money always comes. I don't. We don't worry about that. So sometimes I make YouTube videos, get paid for that. I'm mean, actually somebody offered to pay me on my Periscope once, to pay me for doing a video. That was kind of interesting. There's always ways to make money if that's all you want to do is make money. I'd much rather take care of my kids. So actually, that sign wasn't flashing. Yeah, I do that. Help my son's team. We're actually going to Singapore in two weeks for an away game. I'm thinking of going. We're thinking of going to China next week. We're debating it. Uh, I thought about taking the drone, but it's a bit hazy. We'll see. I gotta work on my video blog for tomorrow. I don't really have much content. I have a video blog on YouTube. Yo! Oh, thanks, mate. Second lunch. I had noodles before the movie. Yeah, big popcorn in the movie. So, I won't stare at people out here. New Zealand fish. Mm. Train spotting too. Train spotting too. Visit Periscope, maybe. Hmm. I met up with him before. Tell you what, guys, I'm gonna end this broadcast. I'm gonna finish this in peace. I'll uh, come back a little later. We'll go up to the peak, yeah? So, we're gonna hike the peak. Anyway, thanks for watching. Talk to you soon.